Nigerians are expected to seek out the best. Two words to describe the act. Be the first to know. From the north, south, east, west, and around Africa. Presidential we break the news. Men in Nigeria. Now you can catch all the actions live. I wish you would as the news breaks. We are Core TV News. Welcome to Core TV Prime Time. A 24 hour news station. It's another beautiful Tuesday morning here in Lagos. Good morning and thank you for joining us on Core Digest where we bring you a depth review and analysis of top stories as they break in Nigeria. We're counting down now to February 14. It's a month of love for everyone. But the same Nigerian guys are quite happy that the election was fixed on Valentine's Day. Now, how the Valentine party will go this year, I don't know yet. But I'm of one opinion that, of course, we can also share and celebrate love at the polls this year. Let me quickly intimate you quickly with uh, some top stories breaking uh, in Nigeria. Of course, uh, yesterday we were talking about the position of the former CBN governor, Charles Saludo, on some issues. And my guest was of the opinion that um, it's not only enough to be honest at this time but then if you have been in a system for a while and then the only time you could speak against that system was when it doesn't favor you again then probably uh, your testimony can be quite doubted and that is why Everyone gave it to the other CBN governor, Lamido Sanusi, who came out even while in office to talk about a missing $20 billion, so they say. But then, the big question all the while has been, what exactly has the present-day administration done as regards this allegation? Yesterday, President Goodluck Jonathan received the report of the forensic audit of the Nigerian National Petroleum Commission from representatives of the Price Waterhouse Coopers. Of course, the audit was ordered in the aftermath of the claims by the then CBN Governor Labidio Sanusi that $20 billion was missing from the nation coffers. The report was submitted by the country's senior partner of the audit firm Uya Pata at a brief ceremony witnessed by the Auditor General of the Federation. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. President, um, my name again is Uyi Akbata, the country senior partner of PricewaterhouseCoopers in Nigeria. And it's a privilege for us to have conducted this exercise on behalf of um, government. Um, and I hope you'll find it useful as I said in undertaking the continuous reforms in the petroleum industry. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, and, uh, the Attorney General of the Federation. Thank you. Uh, you know, there has been so much of controversies over this uh, NNPC and uh, uh, leakages or not leakages. The National Assembly have looked into it. I remember the Senate has also looked into it. They also used professionals to look into it. Uh, and whatever they get the reports, what appears in the papers from speculations is very high. Figures that I can't even imagine that the country would earn that kind of money. It's been branded on the newspapers, so I'm quite pleased that you've taken a forensic credit uh, of this uh, voluminous, and I will give it to the professional because that's how the government works. There are statutory, uh, that rule that have the statutory responsibilities to handle such assignments, and who is the Director General of the Federation. So, you look, the general will look at it, and at least within the week, let us get the key highlights because the media will want to know the key findings, the service, the Senate findings, and the figures being branded uh, in, the, in the newspaper because Nigerians must be interested. But I already did mention the issue of the uh, reform in the sector. Everybody knows that the sector needs to be reformed, and I believe that uh, by the time we go through the petroleum industry bill and make it uh, into a law, most of these lapses will be correct. Thank you. 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 So finally, the forensic auditing of the NNPC is out and probably in no, in due time, we're going to find out the truth behind the allegations made by the former CBN governor. But he heard Mr. President talk about $20 billion if Nigeria even had the luxury of spending that 
much fun and he also made mention of sometimes West Day probably where um, stakeholders and professionals would have gone through this particular document at this time. Well, let's be hopeful, but from the gestures of Mr. President, it looks as if he doesn't really believe in all of these allegations. And uh, what hope really does this document uh, has to offer only time can tell. Let's move away from that to security. Amazingly, a car bomb went off near the venue of President Goodluck Jonathan's campaign rally in Gombe. You recall that some of his campaigns recently were cancelled as a result of security threat and moving away from one area to Gombe. Of course, some eyewitnesses say that the explosion occurred few minutes after the rally addressed by was addressed by the president. Nigerian government officials have confirmed the blast but say that it's too early to know the casualty figure. We got confirmation that there was actually a blast at the Waterboard Junction in Gombe Town. The incident took place soon after the president and his entourage had left the stadium in Gombe. Casualty figures are still being asserted. It just happened. What do you do? Who is standing there to count the number of people affected? So in another, this is, this thing, this is an incident that just happened. Another yeah, 30 minutes, one hour, like those ones, you will get. We have always given you figures here. But these that involve a num large number of persons and is, is a combat, a, a, in combat, I will not be in a hurry to mislead the press. Really, does it not amaze you that terrorists seem to make bore their claims and threat in Nigeria and they make it happen. Some days ago, the same uh, uh, NOI, the National Information, Director General of the National Information Center, came on television to talk about the plans of Boko Haram uh, using a political campaign rally as their hotspot for uh, bomb explosions. And of course, he also just reported that it happened in Gombe State. Well, we are hopeful that um, at this time we will not just have the idea of what Boko Haram are getting set to do, but we will also be ready to ensure that this kind of disasters are not being wrought on uh, average and easygoing innocent Nigerians. Well, on the other side of the divide, Nigerian authorities also say that troops have retaken five towns earlier captured by Boko Haram in Bornu State and at least 10 others in Adamawa State. And if this information is true, probably the Adamawa State governor can be rest assured that the elections might just go on. One of his claims recently where he begged for an extension in the election date in his state was because of these territories that have prior to this time been captured by Boko Haram. Well, the NOI says that um, the aftermath of a failed attempt by insurgents to take over Medu of course, is the result of all of those recapturing. He continues uh, in this press briefing to inform Nigerians that a number of high caliber weapons were recovered from the insurgents. Aimed at overrunning the strategic town of Maiduguri, they were effectively resisted by our gallant troops, assisted by local volunteers. This brief action, in addition to the recovery of three armored personnel carriers and 17 pickup trucks, also resulted in heavy casualties on the side of the insurgents, the total figure of which is yet to be ascertained, as well as the recapture of the towns of Mafa, Gamburu, Gamburungala, Malamfatori, Abadam, and Marche, while troops are advancing to retake other affected areas at the moment. The situation in Adamawa shows that Hong, Mubi North, Mubi South, Maiha, Michika, Shua, Uru, Uru Gambi, Gombi, Vintim, Uba, Baza, and other areas have been liberated from Boko Haram control, while Madagali, Gulak, Wagamildo, Shelni, Vapra, Samongari, and Gubla are still 
under Boko Haram presence. But really, is it just me? How come all of these are happening all together at once, just a few days to the election? Much victory on the side of the Nigerian military. Of course, now we have um, the, uh, what do they call it now, the forensic audit of the NNPC also coming out at this time. Maybe it's just my political mind that is making that political calculation, but it's quite amazing that everything is falling in place just a few weeks to election. Maybe we might have to be doing elections twice a year so we can have good things happening often. Well, there was another explosion in River State. Now, this time around, the second explosion we're talking about, if not the third, really, we've heard about a um, bomb explosion at the APC Secretariat about two times now, even after the Abuja Peace Accord. But this time around, this explosion did not take place at the party secretariat. It took place at, of course, um, the headquarters or a particular quarters owned by the Nigerian judiciary. And it's coming barely 48 hours after the, the, the Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria declared the suspension of the eight-month-old strike in River State. Honored presence have bumped three separate high courts in Degema, Isioko, and Putakot areas of the state. The incidents were coordinated happened almost simultaneously in the wee hours of Monday and just as the State Police Command confirmed that minimal damages were recorded and no life was lost. It was gathered also that one of the courts in Degema was completely raised by unidentified arsonists with many documents burned beyond recognition. Two courts in the state were attacked before the judiciary workers embarked on the strike on June 10, 2014. Well, wow, kind of impunity are we experiencing in this part of the country? The same river state where uh, party secretariat was burned, the same river state where some party members were attacked, the same river state where, of course, um, uh, a particular court was, was attacked in 2014. And now, just after the suspension of the strike, we have coordinated attacks on about three high courts in one day. Well, I'm hopeful that the Nigerian military, the Nigerian police, and every other security agency is also at the top of their game this time around, not only to stem the tide of violence in this part of the country, but in fetching out the corporates and finding out who and who is involved in all of this. Of course, the normal civilian minds will say that there are certain things some people will want to hide for attacking literally the courts of law. Well, still with the judiciary this morning, as some states begin to back up from the strike, of course, we hear about suspension of the Jusin strike. It's still ongoing in Plata State, and this time around, it is the chairman of the Plata State Nigeria Bar Association, Barrister Lafa Daffa that is calling on its judiciary co-workers to call off their one-month-old strike to allow room for negotiations. We're speaking with our reporter in Joss and he urged the people of the state not only to be patient but to also ensure that all hands are on deck this time because Nigerians need the judiciary. All over the country because uh, all over the country no state has practically and satisfactorily complied with the order of the court. Well, that's why all the state judiciaries have not yet uh, been uh, reopened. It's so only the state uh, federal government courts are that are reopened. He also used the occasion to appeal to his colleagues to temper justice with mercy because so many are languishing in jail. Over 70% of inmates in Nigerian prisons are awaiting trial. Consider uh, the plight of the society because as it is now, there are, there, are, there are some people that were supposed to have been released since, last, um, since uh, early this year and they're still languishing in prison. And people that are being suspected to have committed one uh, uh, criminal act or so, since the be beginning of this year, they have been there either with the police or the, the police uh, detention rooms are not enough to, to accommodate these people. It's only the court that can grant bail in issues like that. So I'm su uh, suggesting to Jusin to be reasonable in their demands 
and the state government too, to be reasonable in their uh, consideration, the demands of juicing. And that we have spoken to the uh, Attorney General of the state, and uh, she has now mandated that uh, we should try to see how we can talk to Jusun together, myself, uh, the uh, AG, and Jusun, to see how we can uh, solve this problem once and for all. Thank you very much, sir. So what way forward now for Nigeria when we have lots of innocent people languishing in the Nigerian prisons, most of them actually awaiting trial? What happens to the credibility of the 2015 election if the judiciary is not alive to ensure that cases, uh, pre-election and post-election cases, are also attended to in time. Uh, it, it's not only happening in Port Harcourt. As a matter of fact, legal officers at the Federal Ministry of Justice have begun a three-day warning strike to press home their demands for a better condition of service. All of this happening at the same time and one cannot but wonder if this is really normal and if there are not some forces are, are powering this effort uh, on scene. The one that the warning strike will snowball into a full-blown action if the management fails to meet their conditions. Of course, these legal officers, the workers operating under the umbrella of the law Officers Association of Nigeria has called the strike to protest what they called worsening conditions of service. And before the strike, the workers had given the authorities a 21-day deadline to address their grievances. Unfortunately, the time has elapsed and now they kick-started already a three-day warning strike to press on their demands and saying that if their demands are not met within these three days, they might just um, have a full blown strike. It, it, it is the characteristic of almost all strike actions in Nigeria. You will hear union uh, saying that, um, you hear union members saying that um, they have um, negotiated with the federal government. They have promised them, but unfortunately, uh, it always gets to this point when uh, certain certain days, certain warnings have been given and then it looks as if the federal government or the government in power isn't doing anything about it. But after all, the question also would be that as strike actions been justified, have strike actions really been justified in Nigeria? Has it really worked? Because oftentimes after they've gone on strike for quite a number of months, what you also hear is suspension of strike. Then you hear them say, well, we are back at the negotiation table. There are promises here and there. And then it goes on and on like that. It just looks as if we're in a circle. We're hoping that um, all of these uh, will be dealt with decisively in time. And indeed, we will see some ingenuity both on the side of leadership and on the side of workers to also uh, uh, bring that patriotism to bear at this time. You recall that um, certain staff members of the Medical Association are also on strike and it's also very, very appalling to find out that very critical aspects and sectors of the Nigerian economy are being bedeviled with these very daunting and daunting challenges. Let's move away from there and find out some other developing stories. You recall that the APC presidential candidate, General Mohamedou Buhari, at the time says that he would not be participating in the broadcasting organization of Nigeria-sponsored uh, organized presidential debate. It's happening again. There's another one, actually, and this time around, the APC presidential candidate has also opted out of a live television debate that is being organized by the Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria and Channels Television. Of course, in a swift reaction to that, the PDP is saying the decision of the APC to back out again is a contemptuous act. As a matter of fact, the PDP noted that it was a despicable decision called on Nigerians now to respond by rejecting APC and its presidential candidate, Mohamedou Buhari. The party's presidential campaign organization said in a statement by spokesman Femi Fani Kayode that it shows that General Buhari is incapable of engaging in rigorous live television debate on the issues 
of governors. PDP argued that the opposition party pulled out of the debate organized by the Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria and Channels TV because it was out to shoot Buhari from public scrutiny. The reason earlier given by APC as we guess the, the one organized by Bonn was some uh, revelation of partisanship by some organizers of this particular debate. One would also think that in an election hearing that has been so much characterized by name calling, by personality attacks, that probably a presidential debate will give all Nigerians the true picture of an issue-based campaign at this time, and that we will be able to identify who's got the intellect, who's got the ideas, just that. As it's been done in other developed climes, we saw Barack Obama, we, uh, of course, we saw uh, him slog it out with Hillary Clinton, even at the primary election level. It was beautiful. It was an opportunity for the American people to make a qualitative choice. Why can we not just duplicate that in this climb? Many are asking if the APC really has something to hide. One and a second time, they say in the mouth of two or three, the truth, of course, will be established. But what exactly is the APC saying as regards all of this? That also we will find out in the course of the show today and find out what reasons the APC is given for not participating in this election. And if indeed they have alternatives, of course, I found the script here. Against the backdrop of its decision to opt out of the second debate, the APC is saying that um, it will now embark on a series of town hall meetings. And this, according to the presidential campaign organization, is a deliberate strategy for Mohamedou Buhari and his running mate, Professor Yemi Oshibadjo, to interact and speak directly to citizens uh, on the policy thrust of their envisaged administration and how the objectives will be achieved. So, Nigerians, what do you think between a debate and a town hall meeting? I'm going to open the phone lines in a GF now to find out your thoughts along this line. If indeed a town hall meeting will be a better alternative for Nigerians to understand and to decide as we count down to the February 14 general elections. Of course, um, it goes ahead to also talk about the importance of charting a course for the Nigerian people, saying that um, this hall meeting is slated to be held in Kano on Tuesday to interact with traders and market associations before heading for Bini to meet labor and civil society leaders. The spokesman for the campaign team, Garba Shewu, said the party was compelled to chat this course because of the need for a uh, person-to-person interactive sessions during which pertinent questions will be posed to the candidate and responses provided. It's all right. We'll see how that goes in time. But um, indeed, if you ask me, a presidential debate would just have been a better way to go. Let's find out what this caller has to say. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Call Digest. I'm afraid we lost that. When you call it in and able to turn down the volume of your TV set so we can have um, a crystal clear communication going on. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Call Digest. Good morning. Are you there? Hello. Welcome to Call Digest. Turn down the volume of your TV set. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm from I'm just calling from Kaduna. From Kaduna. What's your name again? Suleiman. Suleiman, what do you think? A debate, a presidential debate, or a town hall meeting? Which would you have preferred? Uh, it's just the town hall debate. Why do you think so? Um, because we, the Nigerian people, eh? go ahead. Okay. You know the actual thing that is happening in Nigeria. Mm. That's right. It's all right. Well, I want you yeah. 
We just want to fake that I really understand your position on that. But um, on the other side, many will also tell you that unlike a town hall meeting that is being, unlike a town hall meeting that is being organized by a particular party, a presidential debate would have given a freer ground for intellectual competition between the two candidates. Hello, good morning. Can you turn down the volume of your TV set? I'm afraid that where you are is quite noisy. I will need you to walk away from where you are when you're calling or turn down the volume of your TV set so that we can have um, a really crystal clear communication ongoing. It looks like I have another call here. Hello. Good morning. Welcome to Call Digest. Good morning. Anyone there? You're on to Call Digest Tuesday. Good morning. What's your name? Where are you calling from? It's Abdullah Muhammad from Abuja. Abdullah Muhammad from Abuja. How's Abuja this morning? Fine, thank you. So what do you think? Town hall or presidential debate? Town hall meeting I or presidential debate? Believe a town hall meeting. Why do town you hall meeting. why would you choose town hall meeting? Because the media of nowadays are being politicalized. Okay. The medians are so politicalized. Mm. Yes. It's all right. And you think that um, presidential debate at this time might not be a better way to go. I understand your point of view clearly. Thank you for your contribution from Abuja. Let's just take one more call before we go find out what the top stories are today on the Nigerian dailies. Of course, um, I have the Nation, I have the Vanguard, the Punch, as well as the Guardian newspaper for review this morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Call Digest. Thank you. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Michael, calling from Lagos. Michael from Lagos. Which way to go? Yes. Presidential debate or town hall meeting? I prefer presidential debate. Okay. Why would you choose presidential debate? Because presidential debate is how Nigeria wants it, not how you want it. But the town hall meeting is how you want it and how you want to go about it. But presidential debate is how Nigeria wants and how Nigeria wants to go about it. Because the questions were not sought out from one source, but from around the globe. So it's how the nation wants there want to go about it, not how you live. You know, callers from Kaduna and Abuja this morning are of the opinion that uh, possibly some media stations are partisan and that might compromise the quality and the credibility of a presidential debate. The question was not so said uh, by the media. The question the, the English is uh, open all over the world. So they thought the so individual attend this question and they were compared by the media. So if anybody has suggested that that should be the best, the person is being that biased, not being truthful. It's all right. Thank you very much for your contribution from Lagos. Good to hear from you. Let's just take this one more call. Hello, good morning. Hello, hello good morning. Welcome to Call Digest. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Isa Umar, calling from Sudeja. Isa Umar, you have one minute. Which way to go? Okay, uh, I think there's no need for any debate. Mm. There's many people that are so much hungry for debate. They are the same people promise, lot of promises, no one they fulfill. So what are they debating for? It's all what right. are they debating for? So we don't need any debate. We need action. They promise a lot of promises. In terms of the police, a lot of police, no one, no one is fulfilled. So, I get the thinking for. So, the big to Nigerians, for me to believe them again, or what? We know who to vote for. So, we don't need any debate. Debate or no debate, we know who to vote for. It looks like your mind is made up already, Omar. So, then we get the big, we don't need any debate. It's all right. You made your point there, Omar. Thank you very much for your contribution. Hello, good morning. You're calling from where? Worry, can you turn down the volume of your TV set? 
What's your name, my brother from Worry? Richard, turn down the volume of your TV set and go ahead with your contribution. Okay. Go ahead, Richard. What with you? Presidential debate. Oh, the town hall meeting. Is it, see, the town hall meeting will be a debate, oh, because it's APC that will be conducting, sponsoring, <laughs> and financing that one. And, you know, anything can go ahead from there. It won't be a debate. No PDP. I'm not sure any PDP candidate will feature in that town hall meeting. It's all right. Thank you very much for your contribution. We'll take a short break now, and I'll be back with top stories making headline on some of Nigerian newspapers. Stick around. Don't go away. You can now watch Core TV News Live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News. A 24-hour news station. The dailies every day on Core TV News. From time immemorial, women have birthed life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Morimi of Ife, a Moten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical, women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. They see you as weak, and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, would you, come, would you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. The dailies every day on Core TV News. Glad to have you join us again on Core Digest Tuesday. I am Nifemi. Ogun-Toye. Of course, between presidential debate and town hall meeting, what exactly do Nigerians want? We have um, quite, uh, we already got quite a number of calls, Abuja, Kaduna, Lagos, while some are saying town hall meeting might just be the right way to go because of the partisanship interest of some media houses. And that indeed uh, has the potential of compromising the integrity of debate as they are being organized these days. Well, on the other side, many are of the opinion that it is important that we publicly test the intellectual capacity and abilities of these leaders. Politicians have grown too much pot bellies uh, these days. Let's find out if they have something upstairs. It's not just about the name. It's not just about um, the credentials they have to offer. Let's ask them some questions and let's see how they react to it. The phone line is still buzzing. We'll get back to that shortly. But let's find out what the top stories are on some of Nigerian newspapers. We'll start with a punch this morning. 
Suicide bomber strikes near Jonathan's rally venue. The rider here, three die at PDP campaign in Aquaibum. Three rivers courts bombed. We gave you details of that earlier on the show. The front page picture tells a story. Armored personnel carriers of the Chadian army pointing in the direction of Gamburu in Nigeria for a position in Futoko, Cameroon on Monday. Okay, you see details of that, of course, inside the punch. Five par firms get 18.26 billion naira loan. That's on page 30. ACF wants Tompolo Dokubo over Danjima. That's on page 12 of the punch. Four Nigerian banks listed among top 500 globally. Page 31 of the punch newspaper federal government to release forensic audit report on nnpc mr president is hopeful that that should be out by west day all of these gelling and working together ahead of the february elections the content of this audit is the interest of many nigerians let's hope that we'll get in touch with that very soon you get details of that story on page 18 of the punch our ban rice tomato imports says buhari page 30 of the punch and what will be the implication of that on the rich nigerian and the average nigerian you want to also find out details of that if you care to check family associates mourn as okoya thomas dies at 79 page 20 of the punch may soul rest in peace and uh, you get details of all of those stories if you care to check somewhere inside all right let's see this this is the nation newspaper the front page picture here also shows three armored vehicles of the chadian army uh pointed in the direction of gamburu nigeria from a position in Futoko, cameroon at the weekend uh, chadian aircraft struck boko around positions in the nigerian border town for a second straight day on february 1. the top story here shows Pressure mounts on Jagger to postpone elections. See also details on page 6. 44.7 million cards collected. Of course, advocates of postponement seem to be getting more desperate this time with the presidential election just 11 days away. Well, looks as if the chairman is resolute, remains firm, insisting that the commission is prepared for the all-important exercise. You'll find our details on the front page, and it continues on page two of the nation. Okoya Thomas dies at 79, his last moments by sun. Nigeria decides somewhere on the top corner of the nation how Jonathan government ran economy aground by APC and LC opposes post shift Sultan seeks credible election. Schools won't close for elections, says federal government. ACF flays ex militants attack on Danjuma. You get details of all of those stories on pages 2 to 7, pages 10 and 60 of the nation. So, what do you think? Should the federal government close down schools for elections? Is it a uh, public debate or town hall meeting? Hello, good morning. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Totuku from Anambra. Totuku, how are you today? I'm fine, my brother, this morning. So what do you think now? Are you also voting for town hall meeting this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Who is even talking about town hall meeting? Town hall meeting is more or less like family meeting. Mm. We, we, we know how this thing works. Mm. You see, any Nigeria who is advocating at this point for a town hall meeting, I think should have his head to the exam meeting. Mm. Our meeting that uh, even growing up politicians do organize in order to further their interest. What is our meeting? The meeting where you call your political associates, you call your 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 your, your party members, call your people, and where we shall come and give you applause. We are talking about debate. If you say you have something to offer, you should be able to argue it out. You should be able to articulate it. You should be able to present it. You see. The, the argument that uh, some media houses are, are biased, to me, with due respect, it's, it's a lame argument. Because it, it's not as if you, you're going to be asked to pick a number and the other person pick a number. No. The same argument, the same questions will be presented to you. Mm. The same question will be pre presented to, to all of you. So, so whether uh, media houses are biased, it's not, not by any means, 
emitters de, uh, deprive you of the knowledgeability of what you want to do. So, Chiku, so I want to encourage Nigerians, we should push further for debate. Okay. Although I know that some people are very articulate and well-spoken in terms of debate, which does not by any, by, by any means translate to, to their ability to do what they say they want to do. But then, we need to... Our leaders, just like you said, right? some of them are grown possibly. Some of them, but no, they, they, in fact, this is we did debate. Whether, whether the political parties like it or not, they should come and tell us what they want to do for Nigeria so we'll stop taking them seriously. So mm. this is my position on this. It's all right, Tuchiku, but is it true that certain uh, media stations are biased? Of course, there are opinions that you you watch a TV set, I mean, you watch a TV channel and you can tell which party they are dancing to. Do you think, for instance, such a channel will organize a debate that will be favorable to the opposition? Uh, uh, see, you, you, you know, the problem with Nigerians, like I always say, is that we pretend a lot. There is nothing such as being biased against a particular candidate as far as media is concerned. Remember, those media are not the manufacturer of the adversity, adverse they place. They are being paid to... I don't think there is a, 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 a particular channel that the opposition will like, point to that say we brought our adverse and they refuse to accept it. That is why you, you, you should not be talking about being biased. You see, the media has a role to play. You see, if they have been paid to, for a particular advert, the duty depending on their rules and procedure. The duty is to is to play those adverts. Okay, so I, I, for you not to come up and say that this media is, is biased against me, what of the one that is playing your own? What every media has playing your, your advert? Are you saying, Tochuku, categorically that no Nigerian media station that you've seen or watched recently is biased? Because that's quite unconventional. <laughs> I, 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 have not, I have not seen any. There is a particular media house that has that has gone as far as uh, 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 diminishing the image of a particular candidate that I love so much. But I wouldn't say that I have. You see, so I don't think, I don't think all those things are serious arguments. argument. Let me present me with the facts. It's all right. Thank you very much for your contribution to Chiku. Regards to you, the people in Anambra this morning. You remember debates in primary school? Good morning, co cool debaters, um, panels of judges, accurate timekeeper. My name is Steve Femi Ogunsori. I am here to say that the father is better than mother. <laughs> Maybe some of our politicians didn't do that in primary school, and that's why they are scared to do it right now. But come on, think of it. In other developed climes, that's how they actually test who is who. It's not just about the political para paraphernalia or whatever it is they call it. If APC is scared or is kind of um, cautious about the organization of a particular debate. I think what APC should be calling for really, I'm afraid I'm sharing my opinion right now, and I might just have the liberty to, is to ask for an unbiased organization to conduct it because I am so much in love with debate because I want to see what these leaders are really capable of. I'm tired of just um, hearing their names on TV. I want to know the stuff they're made of because I can't give you a job until I've conducted an interview with you to test <laughs> how much impact you've got. I mean, how much knowledge you've got upstairs let's take this call hello good morning okay i'm afraid that um, we're just going to continue with the papers hello good morning are you there hello good morning what's your name where are you calling from yeah this is Fester, so I'm worried. first let's turn down the volume of your tv set can you do that yes beautiful go ahead with your contribution first us I'm of the opinion that the town hall meeting is better because if you watch what is happening, you see that, one, the media houses are biased. That is number one. Then number two, you see that uh, the debate, as it is organized, seems tending to favor one particular, uh, one particular uh, political party. And then thirdly, how many Nigerians watch television, for God's sake? No that watch television, I have opportunity to watch the television, read newspapers. Ah, those people who will not on that very day come out to vote. Oh, well, wait, hold on. So Let me take you up on television. that. Let me take you up on that very quickly. How many yes. people will now attend the town hall meetings? Do you think that um, all yes, the parties can... Meeting.
you are closer, you are closer to the people. How many, people. how many you local governments? Just a you minute. The number, but at least you condescending to reaching the immediate people. The local how people. many of those people do you think these parties can reach before February 14? It doesn't really matter. The information we dismiss. I think there are more people who it's watch TV than the town of meetings that they are going to reach. Those of them that we have seen on, on the screen, they are the elites. Will they be able to stand five minutes on the queue that very day? They say they are going to vote. It's not true. They don't vote. They don't vote. So, that home, even if they are not able to cover the whole uh, uh, the country, but the few they are able to reach, they will hear. They will be happy at least that the man came that so low to meet them. It's a, a, a sort of recognition. Two, they will hear from him few things, even though politicians in Nigeria don't tell us or they tell us what they will never do. But at least it's a sign of re the respect that it's, they came right. to them to tell them this is what they have to offer. I respect your so opinion, first. I prefer that whole meeting everywhere. Why are they not campaigning? Why are they campaigning to all the states? It's a sort of local, uh, sort of uh, uh, town hall meeting. Why don't they go to the television and they stay in Lagos or Abuja there and they keep making their jingles? Why are they going around? It's all right, Festus. Thank you very much yeah. for your contribution yeah. from Worry. Yeah this morning i wish i was conducting a poll to find out um, which one is actually higher but you already know where i pitched my tent so i might not be an unbiased umpire <laughs> i might just rig the election here and make presidential debates win so let us go ahead you can decide uh, uh, which um, which of these school of thoughts really is the pulse of nigerians watching the show this morning let me just take another call before i go ahead with the papers good morning, good morning. welcome to call digest Yes, I'm Comrade Olari Waju, which you will call Ilori. From Ilori, how is Ilori this morning, Comrade? Uh, yes, Ilori is a king, as usual. Okay, so what do you uh, think? Yes, my take on the uh, issue is that uh, normally I'm expecting a, a kind of a presidential debate to start all meeting. Okay. But it's quite unfortunate that our media houses they are taking a kind of disturbing dimension by showing a, a, a first-class balance posture. In fact, we have seen it before now. I don't want to mention stations, but you and I know better. Them that are serving as an agent for one political party or the other. And sincerely, by assessment, I listened to Daily Alake yesterday on Channel TV that there is being the house, that do, the body that want to uh, organize the presidential debate, and if they are non partition why not feature? That why has the feature before now? And he said it point blank, that if it's a, 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 a channel, like Channel TV, and other related one, because when you watch the uh, assessment day by day, I commend your, your channels, call TV, because you are acting as an independent agent. <laughs> That's the way you see it. Okay. So and we appreciate calls, that. Mm. Why not embrace that? Okay. So unfortunately, when you see a child, maybe they are fighting for one political party or the other. Mm. They are more of them in mm. terms of news, mm. in terms of coverage, and what are few. It's all right. Their credibility. There is no short in short. So that is my take on that. But normally, at least when you have a, a two prominent political parties like this, what we like to hear from their drivers, what do you have for us? It's normal to have presidential debate. But unfortunately, Nigeria media houses they have not portrayed the authentics that guiding the media house to the non partition and serve as a medium so the public will be know what is on. So I commend your uh, media house together with that of channels for that to try to emulate from you. So that is my take on that. But on a final note, I want to talk about the call from different angles that the election should be postponed. Okay. Sincerely speaking, the call is highly condemnable because we are, we are waiting for Nigeria to decide. But unfortunately, the call is nothing but a ploy of the paternary ploy. We have a inimica to our democracy. So I want to hold the political party and Nigeria at last that we should be ready to ensure that February 14th, 
is feasible to hold our presidential election. So that Nigeria will decide either for President Jonathan to continue or to discontinue. The reaction of Nigeria through electoral poll will determine the fate of this country. It's all right. God bless Nigeria. Thank you very much, Comrade, for your contribution. Comrade, are you also aware that um, the Newspapers Proprietors Association of Nigeria and Channels TV are also, of course, conducting a debate, which are from this report that I have in front of me, APC is also backing out of it. You also made mention of the postponement of election. The Nation newspaper reported this morning that um, just 44.7 million cards collected uh, have been collected. I don't know if that means that um, that is the number that has been distributed thus far, because we're also considering the percentage of the PVCs that have been distributed relative to the ones that have been received, so that we won't have millions of Nigerians being disenfranchised because how exactly are we going to call an election credible when everyone who who is supposed to participate uh, is not participating not because they do not want to but because they do not have the opportunity and of course have access to the pvc to do so i'll get back to the phone lines very shortly keep the calls coming but let me quickly find out what the top stories are today on the front page of the vanguard newspaper Jonathan's campaign ground bombed. The riders here two killed at Gombe Stadium three minutes after president left. Another explosion rocks court premises in Rivers. 6.87 trillion naira stolen yearly from Nigeria, says AU report. You get details of all of that on page 9 of the Vanguard. The front page picture, Jonathan in Gombe, Emir of Gombe, Alaji Abubakar Show, Abubakar the Thought, welcoming President Good Luck Jonathan during the visit of the PDP presidential campaign organization to the Emir's Palace in Gombe. That was yesterday. Behind the president are PDP chairman Adamu Muhazu and Gombe State Governor Ibrahim Dankwabo. Lagos socialite Malade Okoya Thomas dies at 79. That's on page 55. First gate, details of employment on overseas internship. You find that on page four. And to other stories now, Kerry's insult. Joke, says uh, Ambassador Keshi. Uh, did I get that right? I believe you get details of all of that. 26 and 27 on the Vanguard. Kwankwa So transforming Kano via open governance, page 37. Let's find out what Mr. and Mrs. has to offer today. This is democracy. That's what the Mrs. is saying, why should I vote for the candidate of your choice? And how will you know if I didn't vote for him? And the man says, I will watch your reaction when the result is announced. <laughs> I think that's the best way to know uh, which party one really has voted for. But come to think of it, is it compulsory that your wife votes for the same person you are voting for in February 14? Come on, February 14 is Valentine's Day. That's interesting. Maybe you should also tell me about that. If indeed you will have your wife and your children vote the same cause you are voting. I was somewhere recently, I had shared that on this platform before, where I had family members in the single vehicle. And it's amazing to know that we all answer the same surname, but we had different ideas <laughs> of um, political affiliation. It was a heated debate and argument, but thank God we also recall Sorry, the argument that, uh, well, that man is my uncle, this other one is my brother, so I better be careful the kind of things I say because elections will come and go. Quite interesting. And I think that we can also fly on that wings, that we can differ in our political affiliation, but it doesn't mean that we are not brothers. We are sisters, and we should encourage uh, uh, the spirit of sportsmanship in this electoral season, in this electoral season, rather, to ensure that um, it is violence-free, it is rank off -y, and, of course, that we can hug each other afterwards, irrespective of which party wins. On the back page of the Vanguard for some sports this morning, 2015 African Youth Championship, we're going to Senegal to win, says Ugbade. Yakubu returns to England. Mm, Yakubu. The only thing I can remember by Yakubu was that goal-scoring opportunity he missed out for Nigeria some times ago. But he's a fantastic striker and a fantastic penalty kicker as well. If I must say. All right, contest Ivory Coast Eric Bali vies with Algeria's Ishak during the 2015 African Cup of Nations quarter final in Malabo, where Ivory Coast won 3 1. Okay, let me take some calls now and find out what uh, the pulse of Nigerians really is as regards this issue 
of presidential debate or town hall meeting. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Call Digest. Okay. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Okay, this is Dinex calling from Enugu. From Enugu, what's your name again? Dinex. Gillette. Gillette. Okay, go ahead with your contribution, goodness. Okay. Um, I think that uh, uh, we should do the presidential debate. Okay. The town meeting is arranged arranged the meeting of friends. And mm. the questions are shared among themselves. Mm. It's not it's not a good one. The the media has uh, is doing a good job. And if if the opposition doesn't like them, they should suggest uh, another media house. So it's not good to drag them into this politics because you need the media houses to work. Except, it's okay. Exactly mm. what they did and drag the army into politics, forgetting that they will need the army mm. if they win in their government. Mm. So the debate is better than the media houses. They are just trying to touch. It's all right. It's all right. Thank you very much, goodness, for your contribution. Let's get to uh, our last point of call on the dailies this morning. I have the Guardian newspaper. Jonathan receives NNPC audit report. The writer here pledges speedy action. Of course, Abuja is 39 today, but they always forget. Forget what? Find out details on the front page. It continues on page two of The Guardian. The front page picture here shows former governor of Lagos State, Ashuaju Bolak Metinubu, with Chief Razak Okoya, daughter of the deceased, Jimoke Okoya, uh, during condolence visit to the family of late Chief Moladi Okoya Thomas at his residence in Victoria Island yesterday. Comfort delegates other seek postponement of 2015 polls. Page 4, Buhari declines debate. PDP others berate him. That's on page 6. Ebola vaccines trial starts in Liberia. That's on page 10. And Egypt confirms death sentences for 183 uh, people. That's on page 10 of the Vanguard. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Call Digest. Welcome to Call Digest. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello. I'm right here with you. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Solomon Oladoji. I'm calling from Ondo State. Ondo State. Turn down the volume of your TV set and go ahead with your contribution, Solomon. Okay. People have complained that this APC is out of the uh, debate. That's right. For this 2015. For last debate, 2011, Jonathan was not there. And people did not complain, and all these people that they called, they did not call that. <laughs> later, Jonathan later organized personal debate for himself. But so that's all that time, people did not complain. <laughs> he organized a personal debate for himself. It's but all right. Because this man said that these people that organized this debate, they are biased. Now, Nigeria has to be it for it. But what of that 2011 that people did not think when it's your way? Jonathan did not attend that today when it includes all the presidential aspirants at that. That is my suggestion. It's all right. Thank you very much for your contribution, Sullivan. I'm joined now by legal practitioner and public affairs analyst as we count down to the February polls and discussing matters arising. Barrister GTO Gunye, good morning and thank you for joining us today. My pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Let's start from this issue of presidential debate. It looks like this is the second time that the APC will be turning it down. Isn't it supposed to be the right way to go, especially in a polity that has been beclouded by name-calling, personality attack, in a time when Nigerians are yearning for issue-based campaign? What are your thoughts along this line? Well, let me say that it's become fashionable, indeed customary, uh, in an election to have debates. Yeah. As a matter of fact, even when elections are held at the student union level, okay. at that micro level, you have what is called the manifesto nights, okay. um, where candidates, uh, student candidates, 
will mount the rostrum and deliver speeches interlaced with quotes, uh, some of them not in sync with what <laughs> they say at that level. Mm. Uh, but the student will clap and all that. Um, at that level, uh, it's possible for students to identify uh, the person who is most endowed with the gift of the gap, who is rhetorically the most superior or the mm. most superior, and they could be swayed by that, by that kind of mm. uh, 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 that kind of embroidery, if you like, that kind of uh, garnishing, that kind of form, are distinct from essence. Mm. Um, ability to debate is one thing. Content of debate is another. So, I believe that debates are very useful. Uh, if you draw an example here, uh, in the United States, uh, the last election, uh, there were three debates, presidential debates. The first debate was a judge to have been won by Romney mm. against a sitting president. And indeed, the Democratic Party went back to work. That's right. Indeed, the president on that occasion, I'm talking about the president of the United States, who is an orator himself, mm. a writer, a thinker, who have some books uh, to his name, uh, and who had the facility of language, mm. uh, American language being his first uh, language. Not here where you have your mother tongue mm. and then you learn oh, English learning. along the way. I see. Uh, still had to go into seclusion mm. for coaching, for rehearsal and for practice uh, before the, the second debate that, you know, uh, was adjourned to have been won by him and then the clincher, which was the third debate. Mm. So I'm saying that even in certain democracies, debate uh, is very important. Unfortunately, in our country, um, politicians, you know, do not want to engage in debates. Yeah. And I take us back. Since 1999, since 1999, continuously, the candidate of the People Democratic Party, and I'm not saying this as a partisan who say it, had shown debates. In 1999, there was supposed to be a debate. Jiralusha didn't attend it. Shifulufalai debated himself. So Nigerians forget things easily. Yeah. In 2003, of course, he didn't attend the debate. A general wouldn't attend the debate, you know, more or less. Uh, 2007, of course, Pierre Aguilar didn't attend any debate. 2011, this president. President Gulag Jonathan shunned a debate. The three persons who then participated in that debate of four were General Buhari, Alaji Shekarao, and uh, Malam Nuhu Ribadu. It's getting so the president didn't attend that debate. But the president then chose to attend a debate where he made a solo effort, the true question, and he, and he answered that question. So it was not a debate. It was a monologue. So I'm saying this for people to put all these things in perspective. I am not, I don't react to issues spontaneously, losing sight of the sense of history. My word on this is that debate is good. Candidates should not shun debates. Uh, because there may be people out there who have not made up their minds. And even for those who have made up their minds, they want to learn more mm. about the programs, the policy issues, about the capacity of their candidate. They want to have a peep into his, uh, you know, sometimes uh, personal lives. I think it's here that people just say, ah, no, 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 don't say this about the president. How more do we know about our presidents, even when they are Zoom office, about their families? Elsewhere, the first lady, the children, everybody is known. Mm. You know, how much do we know about their idiosyncrasies? How much of the rumors we know 
is true of yeah. our leaders. I and I think that debates mm. are very important uh, to help Nigerians to, to understand, understand yeah. this because we live in an era of transparency and accountability. And so when you engage in debate, you give us the assurance that when you get elected, you'll be accountable to us. So it's important. Let's take a commercial break now and we'll be back with more on Cold Digest Tuesday. Don't go away. Which person can you carry? And we now for MTN Cash Press. You see the look? Ah, plenty, plenty people don't they win 10 million naira every week and 1 million naira every day. To win, just dial star 170 hash for free and correct a hoof with you. Where that TV your generator or phone, you fit win all for free every day. MTN, everywhere you go. Welcome back. It's called cool Digest Tuesday. Barrister, w w before we get into the history of the debate and, you know, how it came up in the first place, there are people asking if oratory, the prowess to articulate one's idea, isn't it a part, a major part and parcel of leadership quality itself? Yes. Um, for two reasons. Look, um, you may be capable and competent and you have the capacity but what are the primary tests for determining your capability or capacities your oral declarations pronouncements statements and your written work um Unfortunately, in this climate, many of our political gladiators are not able to write their thoughts. Many of them, at cuts across, uh, rely on media men, speech writers, to write their thoughts for them. Chief press secretaries. Uh, and so on and so forth. <laughs> so you are not able to really determine what their thought patterns and what their ideas are uh, from what are purported to be their written speeches and all that. It's not always been like that. I cite an example, Chief Obafe Maulo. And people keep wondering, why do we go back to this man that died several years back? Yeah. He was not yet in government. He started writing books on the future of Nigeria, 1947. Yeah. Uh, he wrote a book, uh, Path to Nigeria Freedom. 1947, and kept writing. He was a premier for nine years before the federal election of 1959 that led to his becoming the leader of the opposition to the federal parliament. He wrote his memoir, Awo, an autobiography, where you have all his thoughts, all his beliefs, all his philosophies, you know, well later, and how he had played a role in Nigeria's uh, battle for independence. Now, by 1962, he was already in prison. I didn't leave prison until 1966. But he wrote about three or four books while he was in prison. Taught on Nigerian constitutions, uh, the strategies of the People's Republic of Nigeria, wrote in 1968. He kept writing. And these are truths. These are treasures of some sort, if you're looking for. In fact, people still resort to his works in understanding our current political debacle in Nigeria. Uh, Zeke also wrote an autobiography that I call My Odyssey. Although he read political science, he was not as uh, forthcoming in writing as if above my whole law. Now they kept writing. So, uh, to answer your question, debates provide a forum by which people can assess the capabilities of candidate through what they say. However, sophistry, sheer grandiloquence, 
and a gift of the gab alone will not tell you what the capabilities of a candidate is. A candidate may be gifted, may have rhetorical progress uh, and all that, but that candidate may not have integrity. So if you're looking for the rasmatas of politics, for the people that can walk the crowd, that can deliver 1,000 words yeah. per minute, if that's all you want, you may get that. But that does not tell you uh, ultimately about the capability of the candidate. So it's, 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 it's mixed. Yes, debates are important. Politicians should be able to speak lucidly, mm. coherently, logically, and intelligibly. Uh, you should be able to deliver your thoughts. You should be able to tell people what you want to do, you know, uh, and then let people be persuaded by your argument or position. But as I've said, Hitler was a great orator. Maybe, maybe we don't know. <laughs> he was a fantastic orator. They call him the Führer. He was pit size, small in size, but a demagogue is an orator. Mm. He would talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. But he was a brute. Mm. He committed acts of genocide that are still being remembered in the world today in terms of what he did. So you can say whatever you can be a good preacher, you can whatever, but that by itself and standing alone does not tell whom you are, does not reflect mm. your integrity in the final analysis. Let's quickly get back to the specifics of um, the situation we find ourselves. The two parties, the PDP for instance is saying that the action by the APC to back out of a live television debate is a contemptuous act. And they're saying it is probably a way of the APC shielding the general from public scrutiny. On the other side, the APC is saying that the integrity of the uh, organizers of these debates are questionable. And uh, the partisanship interest might also compromise the quality of debate. But do you see that really being a possibility for a debate that has been televised live? For crying out loud, even if the organization is compromised, isn't that left for the audience to perceive? No, no, there are two things involved there. I'm not APC, I'm not General Buhari. So uh, my disposition to debates may be different. Yeah. You may invite me to the most hostile venue for a debate. And I walk in there and say that I will debate you. That's me. Maybe because I don't carry the burden of a candidate of a party. And in arriving at that decision, I don't have many people to consult. Um, so I will just say, that's me. I will debate you. Uh, but let's put things in perspective and in proper context. I've just told us that in 2011, that candidate that I say is not going to participate in the debate now, participated in the debate. So we need to understand why did he feel that he should participate in the debate then and not participate in one now? In other words, we can't jump to a conclusion uh, as the PDP has done okay. uh, by insinuating that yes, it's because his party wants to shield him from debate. Second, even if my disposition to participate in the debate is, is constant. I, I will debate you anywhere, anytime, any forum and all that. There's always a caveat. If you've insulted my person, you've derided me, you've called me names, I may decide that I don't want to honor you. With a debate. With a debate. Not the person or the co-debater you are inviting, but you. 
So if you knew that we are going to have a debate, why do you use your platforms to humiliate my person, attack me personally, talk about my family, and all that? Righteous anger is no sin. And everybody has the right to be angry. I have told you that, for me, you do, I will debate you anywhere. Be you the most hostile media organization. I will debate you. But that's me. And so for me, um, it is important that we have debates. Not even this one debate. We should have been having this debate earlier than now. It's also important that we stress that this debate should not be reduced to a two post debate. Okay. PDP candidate. APC. There are about seven presidential candidates. Mm. So, mm. and just as Nigerians realized mm. at the last debate mm. that Shekharal performed very well, in spite of the fact that he was not voted for, let Nigerians have the opportunity to also see the qualities of, all the of these other candidates. Just a bit of barrister. That's Let's what is important. Couple. Hello, good morning. Uh, good morning. What's your name? Where are you calling from? To be a Lego ahead with a contribution. Yeah, I, I am happy as a core Buhari supporter that he refused to debate on the media platform that he has been abused. His family, his late wife, they are nothing pain, more painful than the death of a wife and the death of a daughter. So if a television station go on here to be announcing in a very two weeks two week the election that this man lost his wife, this man lost his daughter, the people said the same. So it is, it, is, uh, it is very discouraging and it's not like putting a dagger on one's heart and inviting that same person to come for a public show. It is, uh, it is disgracing, it is debating. It's all right to be, to be late. Thank you very much for your contribution on the show today. You made mention of righteous anger. Uh, wouldn't you also say that an, another quality of a leader, a true leader, a national leader, will be his uncommon ability to look beyond all of these many little statements because of the challenges that are to come? For instance, when you become a president, does it really matter what a part of the country has called you? Would you relate to a person uh, given the things they have said against you? Let me give you an example. Um, in 1979, Chief Richard Akinjide, this is Chief Richard Akinjide, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, who was the Northern People Congress uh, led government in the 60s, he's been the PDP, wanted to be the governor of Old Oyo State, which uh, under the MPN. She bolide the blessed memory of course, was the candidate of the UPN. And there was a debate. In the course of the debate, she Richard Adnide tried to ridicule the UPN program of um, free education and all that yeah. by suggesting that that free education would lead to incompetent touts, people who, who really uh, will not do well academically, misfits being shunned out. And of course, Ibalagi was very angry and said, ah. during the AG years, and of course, the AG was the precursor mm -hmm. of the Unity Party of Nigeria. I'm talking about the action group. There was free education from 1955. And many people, including the family members of Shirisha uh, Ajayi Kinjide, mm -hmm. benefited from that Free education. And Jibala Gedense asked him openly how many members of his family were, were dropouts and all that, since they participated and benefited from free education. Yeah. And of course, she realized, you know, while the debate was going on, stayed a workout and yeah. said that we could not wait being insulted. Now, he was a lawyer then. He had been a minister in the First Republic then. But he just felt that no, 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 I can't answer. And then, the famous speech or uh, uh, statements of mm. Shibola Ege was, Richard, you know, in his uh, the way he speaks, <laughs> Richard, come back here. Mm. 
Richard, come back here. Let's finish this debate. So I, I, I'm telling you, people have several reasons for wanting to attend a debate or not wanting to attend a debate. In our client here, we've had a culture of shunning debate. Sorry, who eventually won that election that you made mention about? Uh, of course, Ibola <laughs> He won the election. And Chief mm. Akinjide, Senior Vehicle of Nigeria, via the 12 to 3rd argument, eventually became the Attorney General of so, the Federation. Probably righteous anger didn't work for him. I didn't call that, that I didn't call that righteous anger. Okay. I'm just, you know, uh, you know, because you ask the question why somebody, whether it is not a leadership trait mm. for somebody to shun side talks and still, you know, you engage in the debate. And I use that example to illustrate the point that there may be reasons why somebody may not want to participate in the debate. Let me be clear. I've said that for me, I will participate in the debate. But that the caveat is that if you've done something, if you hit me below the belt and I feel offended, um, rather than sue you for slander and libel or defamation of character in an election season, I may decide that my response to you should be what uh, I should do by boycotting the debate. Let's take this call. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. What's your name? Where Abdul, are you calling from? Abdul Karim from Ilori. Abdul Karim, go ahead with your contribution. Please, uh, why are we why are we disturbing ourselves on this issue of debate? So debate is okay, but the way things are now is like the media houses are being biased. Why is PDP insisting on debate this time around? I could remember in the last election. The present president did not show up in the debate. The Elmo fought, and people voted him into power. But this time around, whether debate or no debate, everybody has decided on who to cut the record of the both of them are on ground. What Wally did while he was president is on ground. What this one is doing now, we know it. So I'm not a card carry member of any political party, but as I am talking now, whether they debate or not, I have the person I want to vote for. And it will not be a shame on Buhari if he should show up in that debate again. Because he's already insulted his personality, his family, everything on that same uh, deal or something. Uh, so why are they now calling for debate? So, it's all right, Abdul Karim. Thank you for your contribution. Is there any legal binding as a lawyer as we get uh, someone participating or otherwise? In a public debate like this, no, it is is part of the democratic culture. You know, democracy and election as part of democratic tradition um, has a festive dimension. Yeah. Um, it's like a carnival, you know. Um, you know, Nigerians. I know many Nigerians who, you know, did a week mm. trying to watch the American debates, the conventions, mm. the flowery speeches, mm. uh, you know, the, the, what you want to remember in an election. Uh, when Clinton was speaking uh, in their convention, when Obama spoke, things like that. Mm -hmm. You want to listen to that. And those are very important uh, for even uh, upcoming publicists and statesmen. You want to listen to ennobling deliveries, things that will ennoble you, hesitation and all that. So it is important. Mm -hmm. Now, there is another issue that is also very important here. Okay. Uh, we, because you talked about legal binding. Mm -hmm. It's not. Uh, but, you know, Nigerians have a right to receive ideas. Okay. It's a constitutional right. Mm -hmm. They have a right to impart ideas, and they also have a right to uh, 
I receive ideas. Yeah. Now, an information. And so, in the political season, they ought to know as much as possible of the candidates who are contesting for election, of their programs, of their uh, ideas, of what they want to do in government. None of your intervener, and I stand to be corrected, has come out there or has spoken as phone need to say that discussions are not good, debates are inimical to democratic process. No, what they say is that in this instance, this candidate has given a reason that his person has been disrespected, he's been insulted, disparaging remarks have been made about him, and that for that reason, he will not he attend participate. that debate. I'm not going to be judgmental on that, but nobody, nobody can say that in an election, we shouldn't have and it be, and that's why I've given the example I've given that even in a micro election, a seemingly unimportant students' union election, yeah. there are debates. Let's quickly touch on some other stories, uh, developing stories this morning. Now, the nation reports that pressure mounts on Jega to postpone elections, and advocates of postponement they say have instituted four suits in the courts pleading that INEC should be told to pull the brakes on the elections, uh, given reasons of insecurity in northeast, of course, irregularities rocking the distribution of PVC, uh, as well as um, other efforts marching on INEC headquarters yesterday uh, in the same vein. What are your thoughts along this line? Should the elections be postponed? Are there reasons enough for this postponement? A leading online newspaper, Premium Times, which I service as uh, uh, a lawyer had reported about five days ago that there were plans to orchestrate this kind of protest all over the country to prevail on INEC to postpone the election. So my short thought is that what we are now seeing may well be a vindication of that report. Now, an election has been fixed and people are now inundating us with excuses why the election should not hold. There are three principal planks here. One, and these are all tied together. The issue of insecurity in the Northeast, the issue of PVC, not being well distributed by INEC, uh, with the insinuation that INEC is not prepared for this election. And third, the issue of the candidacy of the uh, APC candidate, uh, his results and all that. And I'm telling you that none of these excuses is a cogent and good ground for postponing this election. I have asked publicly, those who are now mischievously, and not altruistically, because this is not altruistic, who are now mischievously conversing for a shift of the poll. Uh, if it is the issue of security they are using, so when will this security be better, if we may ask them? So when will this poll be shifted to? And I'm asking the NSA, who went to England to start to flag off, as it were, this call on the ground of PVC. Although he's an NSA, National Security Advisor, he didn't predicate his call for a shift on the security situation. Smartly, he was predicating it on PVC, meaning that he was getting out of his remit to now suggest a shift in the poll. But that may be for another day. But the point I'm making is that for those who are saying that the security situation in the Northeast is not conducive to holding this election, so when will the security situation be better in the Northeast? Do they know? So if it is not better in the next four or five months, so we get to May 29th, what happens? So we then have an interim government arrangement. What about the possible so, decision? No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that that cannot be a good reason to postpone that election. Two, PVCs. I've also asked people that are conversing mischievously who are hiding under the shibboleth of PVC to seek a postponement 
they are partisans. In Oshun and Ekiri State, we are told that PVCs weren't distributed up to the last, up to the deadline, more than 60%, 65% in both states. So why didn't those people who are calling for a postponement now call for postponement of those two elections on the ground that those PVCs are not distributed? In any case, yes, it is true that when you track, INEC is saying that there are still PVCs that are not collected. But if you declare a public holiday, you ask people to collect their PVCs and they don't come forward, what do you do? So you postpone an election because people are not exercising voluntarily their right to collect the PVC. Or are we expecting that we must drag those people willy-nilly to come and collect their PVCs? I know a number of people say that they've not been able to collect, but I know that the situation is improving. So my take is that um, it cannot be a good excuse to say that because PVCs are not be sufficiently distributed, uh, elections will be postponed. I have publicly argued, and I will be happier, I will have been happier if that's the argument of those who are conversing this, that in lieu of the PVCs, we can use the TVCs. And since in the final analysis, all we're talking about is about the identification of the voter, whose name is expected to be on the voters registered anyway, why can't we improvise by even using our international passport and driver's license? So that once you are identified as the person whose name is there, by means of identification, you should be allowed to vote. People may argue that I'm too liberal, that that may uh, cause a situation whereby there could be manipulation of the process. But I'm saying that those who are planning this mischief and are going about saying that you should postpone an election and anchoring on PVC can do better by being creative and imaginative in the same way I've suggested, and I'm saying this with all sense of modesty, rather than lashing onto that to seek a truncation of an election that some people fear will go one way or the other. They are not mind readers. Uh, they may see certain moods but these are just moods. Let election come and let people exercise their right to All choose the leader of their choice. Totally might just um, jeopardize the integrity that the cadre that is supposed to bring into this election. The cadre that is supposed to validate that you indeed are not just the custodian of the card, but you are the true owner of the PVC that you are bringing to the polling unit. Exactly. So you go to a bank. We might not have a no, to you go, no, no, you go to a bank. You go to a bank. It's a means of identification. And then you go and withdraw a huge sum of money. There is no card reader to the time that you are the owner of the passport. You call it a rule of the thumb. That banker, that clerk, takes your passport. Even if you're suffering from glaucoma, he says you are the one. It's not difficult to know. The party agents will be there. They will be able to identify. Be before I go on here to say certain things, I will have given certain thoughts to you. I just don't come on here and say anything. I am saying that election needs not to be this complicated. So if you approach the police center with an international passport, for example, and say that, this is me. I'm the one who is registered. I'm GTO Gui. And my name is on the register. And they see my face. And the electoral officer, polling officer, say you are the one. And then a party agent who doesn't even know how I'm going to vote says, you are not the one. Then he can say, okay, look at it. Let's assess it. He's the one. And if there's controversy, you can lay that aside. But I'm saying that we must work very hard to make constructive suggestions to INEC on how INEC can deliver on its mandate as statutory provided for under section 25 of the Electoral Act, which gives INEC the power, the sole power, to fix the dates for election, albeit within 
the dates provided by the Constitution. Just a minute. Let's get to the phone lines and find out what the viewers have to say. Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. Welcome to Call Digest. You're yeah, welcome, sir. What's your name? This is Ibrahim Tenu. From Ibrahim Tenu, calling from uh, Swedish All right, go ahead with the contribution, Ibrahim. You know, right from the outset, we need whom we are going to do for. And we know that's okay that some media organizations were asked. This is a clear indication. You know, you cannot attack my family. The mere fact that I want to come and fast, I have sat positively. And all Nigerians know the impact I have created economically. He was invited, the man was invited initially. He was on the invitation. He came. Shekara was there, just like when he was there, this one had said. He participated. He had every reason not to participate now. How can it be something, you know, you can see some of this, it is, it is, it is, it is uncalled for. So he has ever had. If she is reading this one, Sadiq Sadiq will come, this one will come. We knew who we are going to go for. So there's no need. Debate, what kind of debate? It's cow, 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 which is even far, far better. Because this is a man, it's a man of honesty, sincerity. And he uh, always prepared to be going accountable to the whatever you have done. It's all right, Ibrahim. And, I believe you made your points there. What about the credential, I mean, the, what do you call now? The credibility of the APC presidential candidates, uh, 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 certificates that you made mention of? I wished that that debate had never come up. Really? Because is it amounts to a bastardization of uh, electoral discourse to be happening on this certificate the way some people have been doing. What are the issues there? And I'm not saying this as a partisan will say it. This candidate that we're being told had no certificate or that he lied because uh, he didn't furnish any certificate had contested three times. That issue of certificate never came up. It can come up any time, even if he's elected. I guess that that's okay. But the point is that he since said, I have the certificate. Eminent Nigerians have come up to say that we were in the same school with him. We wrote the exams together. And the arguments kept changing. Oh, Hausa language was not a subject taken in 1961. Oh, why should the principal of the school have released the result? Oh, and, and I keep saying, what is this? The Gigi Ogunye that is standing before you does not have a WASC certificate. I'm telling you the truth. How? I wrote a university matriculation examination after secondary school, and I put in that form my statement of result that will be first be issued to you by your school. The certificate is supposed to come later. And I entered the university. I never went to that secondary school over 30 something years ago, Victory College Ikare, to collect my certificate. I presume that at the point they will return it to why after one, two years, if it's not collected. And then you get to a university. And the university, the admission office directly interfaces with WAIC to ask WAIC, these students that have been given provisional admission, that's why it is provisional. Provisional simply means provided you have the result you claim you have. Mm -hmm. At that stage, you don't have a certificate to show. And once WAIC in a result booklet, sheet, sent to the admission office of that particular university, confirms that you have the result. Your admission is validated. You get out of that school. In my own case, from there I went to the law school. Based on the credibility of the certificate. And, and all that. So, but the question that, go and bring the certificate 
when the person has said that the certificate was lost when it was bought, and I said, what is all this all about? I think I understand your point of view. Before we go, let's quickly touch on uh, some updates in the judiciary. Barely 48 hours after uh, Jason declared the suspension of eight months old strike in River State, on note process bound three separate high courts in Rivers. And of course, um, you also recall that two courts in the state were attacked before the judiciary workers embarked on strike on June 10, 2014. In other climbs too, within the country, legal officers of the Federal Ministry of Justice have begun a three-day warning strike to press on their demand for better condition of service. What are your thoughts along this line? I'm a lawyer and I'm telling you that start with the strike that I just ended partially, not in all the courts. Not in all, exactly. The federal judiciaries and then Rivers and Lagos. All the other states were not told that they've called off the strike. This is the first time in my professional career and I'll be around for some time that I witnessed this kind of thing. Called me on strike for a year and I just thought that things have really, really gone very bad for us as a people. My thoughts are that yes, judiciary workers have the right to use a court judgment to call for enhanced conditions of service. Because the presumption here is that if the money that is constitution has provided should be disbursed directly to the heads of the courts all over the country are disbursed to them, it will rub off on the judiciary workers. Um, as a lawyer, I would say that once there is a judgment, once there is a provision of a law, that law ought to be obeyed. And so, for those who are not obeying this law, who are not obeying the provision of the Constitution, it's part of the fact that they swore to protect this Constitution, something very terrible is happening. Does that justify the not action? It's happening. Mm -hmm. However, a more robust look at all these things that in the course of mismanaging our country, governance is being shredded. There are three arms of government, legislature, executive, and the judiciary. When you then say you are disbursing money to the head of the courts, so, and judicial officers now start presiding how you are going to bid for contracts, how you are going to be opening bids, tender, and all that, procurement, and all that. That means they are executing. And that is the function of the executive. Those who are writing these provisions in the Constitution, because they want to solve one problem, they create the other. That's why. Anytime they go around and around and say they are calling a constitutional conference, I ask, do we have people that are knowledgeable enough that can see the Constitution as a schema? Mm in there that can look at the first provision from the point of view of the last, that can relate the last provision to the, and so on and so forth, in there that can fashion out a workable consumer. These are the problems that we're facing in our climate. And quickly, for the cause that have been bombed. Three high courts in River State. It appears that bombs are raining down on rivers people right now and um, the courts have been bombed and i'm wondering why do you want to bomb the courts what for when you bomb the courts because you're talking about the legal health of the citizenry the legal well-being of the citizenry since the court is uh, the forum for people to ventilate their grievances. One day we wake up and hear that people have bombed hospitals. That talks about the physiological well-being of the citizens. And so, for me, this is something that is on head of you bomb cuts for what? And I'm just saying that those who are in government, who swore to an oath, who accepted as Section 14, 
subsection 2b has provided that the welfare and security of the people shall be the primary purpose of governance yeah. ought to be serious about protecting lives and property particularly when the property we're talking about is government uh, property let's just take a few more calls as round of the show this morning hello good morning hello good morning welcome to call digest yeah. um, good morning good morning sir uh, Kadri from Abuja, go ahead with your contribution, please. Good morning and uh, well done for the wonderful work. Um, good, good morning, sir. I want to just uh, be brief, but uh, before I start uh, the comment, I want to remind all that prostitution has been on trial today, March 11, hmm. which is almost two months ago, and uh, people are dying. I, I want to just stop here and we are campaigning and we are discussing and we are discussing and we are discussing. And the truth of the election is all about commonality, providing what people need. And for example, I'm not a, a party, uh, I'm not, I think I'm going to vote, but I, mean, I don't want any active political uh, uh, institution. So I want to just come on the way to talk about the issue of a special group. I watched channel yesterday. I only watched your 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 your, your media yesterday also. And you brought one man, I think uh, Okai Victor, That's who right. were asking yes, who were asking some serious questions and I expected him to respond, but uh, I couldn't get a good uh, idea from all the things that he tried. But today I want to talk about the issue of the food. Jonathan told Nigeria on television, which is exactly what they are coming to tell us now, that to now get a lot of this money on, on channel, the conversation was charging asking and there was an ovation for this uh, wonderful talk and a wonderful uh, disposition or exposition. He said that I don't really think of telling me one hundred years I will do nothing. From his mouth, this is not something. I want to know just came back. Last time, to remind me, you think this is not signing. The debate you are going to, to anchor now, are you going to sign it? Because we are talking about, we are not going to follow trends. Because we are not going to sign the debate. He said it on television, on your own television also, he said he did not sign it. I feel it, but I did not sign it. He was so passionate about it. So the debate we are talking about, are you going to sign it? And people are trying to look at people's uh, 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 kill or uh, ritual of um, uh, communication prowess, quick by saying that this man cannot talk, that man cannot talk, this man can be specially mean or this and this and that. We are talking about different things. Most of the people that are coming as gentlemen, they are coming to coordinate, they are not professional. So they may not even be able to give us a very good charge of some of the programs they have because there are some professionals that put them in place. And we have to look at this from that angle. That's all right. Abdul Qadri from Abuja, thank you for your contribution. We have to round up now one minute. How exactly would you summarize all of these issues in the way of educating the electorate? As we count on February 14, is just about um, less than 12 or 13 days to go. First, What's the role of the electorate at this time? First, <clears throat> just to set the tone mm. for our advice for the electorate. Um, if we're looking for a candidate in either of the candidate of the APC or the PDP that has that gift of flawless articulation uh, to determine who we're going to vote for, we have to parry the thoughts. <laughs> it, it's, it's funny uh, f that there is some presumptuous thinking that one candidate out of these two can better debate or out debate or out perform the other. Uh, I've heard President Woodlock speak severally. And I can tell you,
it's not my cup of tea as far as debate is concerned. As <laughs> the first pass, the gulfs are there, and these are notorious, and I can be mentioning and mentioning and mentioning. Um, so, what candidates should look for in this election? Electorate. The electorate should be looking for this, this election is to look for integrity. And I'm not saying it the way Pakistan was saying that I have integrity, you don't have. No. Nigeria is at the crossroad right now. Nigeria is a killing field. We just hear that people are being killed every day. We think it's normal. It's not normal. We broke it in several places. The infrastructure deficit is there. The economy is almost destroyed. Uh, if you use the exchange rate as an indices. Uh, our schools are destroyed. I went to public school. My children are going to private school right now. Uh, healthcare delivery system is destroyed. So if you want a better society, and you believe that the ballot gives you the power to contribute to the emergence of that better society, use your ballot reasonably right. and wisely to help bring about that better society, not only at the national level, but at the level of the states and at the level of the communities. Thank you very much, Barrister Titeo Guyefu, for joining us today on Cold Eye. It's good to have you always. Thank you. A big thank you to our viewership, all of our callers. We're afraid we can't take all the calls, so you might just have to follow us on our Twitter platform at Cold Eye Just Live, where you can also drop your comments and your contributions. So I'm Nifemi Oguntoye. I'll be back tomorrow for another exciting edition of Cold Eye Just God willing. Stick around for the top of the hour news. Don't go away. You can now watch Core TV News Live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.coretvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. On Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV. Leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station.